team has protected and served the United States of America since the early 1960s. Whether it be bomb raids or riot control, these brave men and women put so much on the line just to keep us safe. Today is training day at the Burnham McCall Training Center, and I will be living the life of a SWAT trainee, going through many of the same obstacles that these men and women go through to become a full-fledged SWAT officer. So let's get started. The Polk County SWAT team is called out 12 to 20 times a year, and sometimes in these call-outs, they will have to breach a building. That's the first part of my training today. I'm here at what they call the match house. In this simulation, me and a partner will go through each room, making sure it's clear of all danger. Suspect down! Clear! After a quick evaluation, I was ready for my second part of training. Due to the dangers of being a SWAT officer, they have to be trained in the most elite weaponry. And that's why today during my training, I'll be using some of the most high powered firearms like AR-15s, Glocks, and MP5s. SWAT officers often find themselves in unpredictable situations, like rappelling off a three-story building. Being a law enforcement officer is a tough job. You need to be extremely in shape, both physically and mentally. But just because you're not ready now doesn't mean that you can't become an officer one day. With the correct training and perseverance, you too could fight alongside the courageous people of our SWAT team. I'm Austin Holloway, reporting for Ignition TV. Being a high schooler is no easy task. Sometimes all the aspects can be overwhelming. Struggles among high school students include many things. Things like classwork, extracurricular activities, and even just getting through the day. It may seem like a lot, but I promise you, you can do it. I'm Austin Holloway and I'll be your high school survival guide. Let's get started. While signing up for your high school courses, you may realize that there are different levels of rigor available to you. Words like AP and honors may seem daunting, but that leads me to tip number one. If you're up to the challenge, challenge yourself academically with a higher level course. Another staple of a good high school student is participating in extracurricular activities. Whether it be track and field, <laughs> taking an instrumental class to express your musical side, or venture into the world of art with an art club. Sadly, I'm not that great at any of these, but I still have to find my niche. With the countless number of electives and clubs offered on this campus, you can't go wrong. These classes are sure to make your high school years much better. Here's Brianna with more information on these clubs and campus. Did anybody get the answer to number five? Why, of course I did. And even though I'm not sure that I should tell you what... Number five? Who cares about number five? More like, I give this class five out of five stars, am I right? Imbecile. Could you guys please keep it down? I feel horrible. My apologies. What about you? What did you get? That's another thing that you need to know about high school. Everybody's different. Some people you may like and some you may not. But that's tip number three. No matter who they are, you need to be accepting and considerate of the people around you. So many aspects play a role in your high school experience. Whether it's academics, extracurricular activities, or just finding yourself. With the tips I've given you in today's show, you can help make these four years the best that they can be. I'm Austin Holloway reporting for Ignition TV. In 1885, George Eastman developed the first celluloid roll film, and little did he know that in no time at all, this would become a multi-billion dollar industry. And the film industry has come a long way since that time. I'm Austin Holloway, and this is the evolution of cinema.
invention of audio films came the American noir era. Witnessing the tragedies of World War II, filmmakers began to delve into topics like crime, greed, and cruelty. Austin, I swear I'll get you your money. I, I just need a little bit more time. The 1970s began a new season of film, uh, commonly known as the science fiction era. With man setting foot on the moon in 1969, filmmakers began to realize the endless possibilities that space and other science fiction settings had to offer. Bringing us sci-fi gems like Jaws, E.T., and Star Wars. My personal favorite. As technology evolved and more possibilities became realities, the blockbuster era came into play and brought us to where we are today. The term quickly became a staple in the film industry, meaning a high-budget production that brings in big bucks. The beginning of the blockbuster era brought us classics like Top Gun, Back to the Future, and Indiana Jones. Whereas the modern blockbuster era brings us anything from sci-fi classics like The Avengers to beautiful musicals like La La Land. In the late 1800s, cinema took the world by storm and over a century later, it's shown no signs of stopping. Though the way that we enjoy movies has changed, it's still an essential part of our human culture. Who doesn't love grabbing some popcorn and their favorite soda, sitting down and watching a movie on the big screen? I'm Austin Holloway, reporting for Ignition TV. Okay. So you're about to graduate, and this meeting is to make sure you're ready for what's next. You mean college? No more classes that I don't have to take? A lot more parties? Moving in with my best friends? This is going to be the best four years of my life! Oops, looks like someone doesn't know a thing about college. Who are you? I'm Austin, and I'm here to ruin everything. First of all, it's a common misconception that college is the logical next step for every high school student. Though 65.9% of high schoolers do go on to attend college, the other 34.1% take different paths, like joining the workforce directly or going to a trade school to learn their craft. I'm not ready for the real world. I have to go to college? You're right. This one looks good. Let's go. How do you do that? Welcome to college, Kyle. The place where you'll spend the next four, five, six, maybe 30 years of your life. Whoa, 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 whatever happened to four? Next misconception, my friend. 58% of college students spend six or more years trying to get their degree. So prepare yourself. You might be here for a while. That's fine. As long as I have my buddies around, we are going to throw the best parties. It's gonna be lit. Parties like this? Bro, you want this last slice of pizza? Ah, oh, that's just lame. Well, sadly, it's the reality. Less than 40% of college students partake in this rite of passage that we call the college experience. In fact, it's more likely that a student will live at home getting their degree. More cost efficient. Okay, even if I don't live on campus, I still need to go to one of these big colleges. The better the college, the better the job. False. Your future career is not dependent on what college you go to. It's the degree that you get from that college. Okay, so what you're telling me is that everything I knew about college is a lie? No, some of what you know is true. I was just bringing light to the stuff that wasn't. College is a very big decision in a young person's life. It'll affect you now, and it'll affect you years from now when you're pursuing your career. And if you make the wrong decisions, it can end up costing you a lot of time and money. That's why I ruin everything. I think my time here is up. Wait! Thank you.
Space travel has been a major part of American history since 1958, when the National Aeronautics and Space Administration was formed. Today, I'm here at Kennedy Space Center to learn a little bit more about worlds unknown, so let's get started. If the possibility of exploring the Red Planet interests you, then the Visitor Center's journey to Mars is the trek for you. Through the use of interactive games and Mars rover mock-ups, the Journey to Mars exhibit will have you travel to another world, and you'll learn a thing or two along the way. Back to it. As I made my way through the Visitor Center, I experienced 3D models, virtual reality, movie theater experiences, and I even got to greet their own mascot. But my day was just beginning. Welcome to Space Shuttle Atlantis. The 45 minute long Space Shuttle Atlantis exhibition takes you through the story of NASA's 30 year long Space Shuttle program and tales from expeditions that actually happened on Space Shuttle Atlantis. Since 1998, the International Space Station has been home to some of the world's most elite space travelers. The ISS Triumph of Technology exhibit will take you through the life of an astronaut living on the space station. This includes their exercises, how and what they eat in space, and even how the spacemen sleep in low gravity. The Visitor's Complex has been serving up intergalactic fun to Florida residents and tourists since 1967. Whether it be trying astronauts food or running with rovers, these are out of this world experiences that you won't get anywhere else. The Visitor Center is open 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. year round, so you can easily plan a trip down to Cape Canaveral and experience all this for yourself. I'm Austin Holloway reporting from the Kennedy Space Center. Happy travels, Kathleen.